where we are going with OL3, what we want to do, um, direction we're going. So first of all, we think that there is a convergence uh, between 2D and 3D, and people expect uh, to be able to draw, to display 3D objects like 3D buildings and 3D terrains on top, on top of 2D uh, projected tiles. So as on this picture, uh, we can see buildings on OSN tiles. So that's, we're not yet there. We don't do any 3D right now, but that's what we want to do. And I it's also interesting to note that that is also what big players like Google, uh, that's the direction they're going to. Uh, another key thing uh, for the project is vector rendering. Uh, we want to be able to display uh, many, vector, many vector features uh, with complex styles on the map. And we think we can use technologies like WebGL uh, to be able to achieve that. And vector tiling is also something we are looking at and something we want to take into account from the very first, <coughs> fr from, yeah, from the beginning of the development of the library. So 3D, uh, 3D and vector rendering um, are our main, main things, I would say. And we think that to be able to display uh, 2D as well as 3D objects and, and with complex styles, many objects, we think that we need to treat map as graphics. And what this means is that, more specifically, this means that we think we want to use a uh, graphics API like Canvas and WebGL that modern browsers uh, support now. And we already do that a lot. Uh, the library, the current, in, in, in its current state, the library uh, uses WebGL and Canvas quite extensively. And we think that by using uh, these technologies, WebGL and Canvas, we can also get very good performance. Uh, now I'd like to take um, some time uh, to position OL3 within the current suite of open source web mapping libraries. So on one side we have OpenLayers 2 and, and Leaflet, uh, 2D libraries, uh, very popular. Uh, OpenLayers 2 has many features that people use and need. And Leaflet is a great library. It's uh, very lightweight. It works great on mobile devices. And it provides an API which is very convenient for, for people to use. On the, other on the other side of the spectrum, uh, we have 3D libraries, uh, virtual globes, like Cesium and OpenWebGlobe. They are fantastic libraries, uh, very powerful libraries, but they are also very complex to use. And with OL3, we want to be right in the middle of that. And we actually want to cover the entire space. Uh, we want to be able to do 3D, and we also want to provide a convenient API, an easy enough API for people to use. And obviously, we also want to support the features that OpenLayers 2 support, because people use those features and need them. So that's it. Um, so. I I'd like to say that OpenAIOS 3 is a very ambitious uh, project, a uh, very ambitious uh, library for ambitious maps, maybe. Uh, so that was the vision. So now I'm going to talk about some of the design principles uh, we apply. Uh, these are the things we care about while developing the library. So the first thing is separation of concerns, uh, separation of concepts. So within the library, everything is very well separated. Uh, we have many modules, many files. Uh, each has a clear task, a clear responsibility. And this actually trickles down to the API. And I'm going to give a few examples here. So the main object uh, that you use at the API level is the map. That's the main object. And the map as a renderer. The renderer is the object that takes care of the rendering operations. So all the rendering operations are done by the renderer object. 
and you won't find any WebGL or Canvas code outside the renderer. And the map has also has a view. Uh, the view is what determines uh, what the user sees of the map. So for example, we have a 2D view object, uh, which is determined by a center, the center of the map, a resolution, and a rotation. And the map has layers, uh, which is very typical, but actually a layer as a source. And the source represents the data. It represents um, the remote service that provides and serves the data. So we have this distinction here. So the source is, if we borrow from the MVC model, the source is the model and the layer is the view. The, the layer determines what you see. For example, it, it has properties like opacity and visibility. So another, um, another thing where things are separated is interactions and controls. We have these two concepts and Tim I think will talk more about it. Uh, so basically interactions respond to browser event on the map and so we have for example <coughs> the double click interaction, to double click to zoom interaction. So this is just an interaction. There is no presence uh, in the DOM. Um, in contrary, controls have a presence in the DOM. So for example a zoom zoom slider or scale line or zoom, bu <coughs> zoom buttons, those are controls. Okay, the other thing we, we care about is obviously performance. Uh, we want the library to be super performant and we take special care uh, for this. And we want to, so we, we are very careful with the code we, we write, the JavaScript, the JavaScript code we write, and we want to avoid boxing and boxing operations that JavaScript engines need to do if you're not careful with the types you put in array. This is just an example. Uh, we also want to be very nice with the garbage collector and we try to re reuse objects within the library as much as possible. Uh, we use this new um, API, API, API function, uh, browser API function, which is request animation frame. So our entire rendering engine is based on this, on this um, <coughs> API function. And we watch the frame rate, the frame rate. We looked, we used tools, um, specific tools to, to assess the frame rate that we, that we achieve. And we also try to redraw as few pixels as possible uh, in the renderer. And one big, th big thing is we use the Closer uh, compiler to get a very compact, um, <coughs> a very compact library with uh, optimized code. So this is just an illustration um, for the things we we are looking at and we are careful about for for the performance of the library. Uh, another thing, uh, the library has no opinion on the UI. Um, which means we use CSS a lot and it's your responsibility as the developer or the designer to customize the controls and everything. And we also provide um, objects like ol.overlay which allows integration with uh, other libraries. For example, uh, Bootstrap, if you want to use Bootstrap. So with ol.overlay you can, you can easily create a Bootstrap pop-up, for example. So that was design principles. Now I'd like to give an overview of the current features uh, we support. So we support various uh, tile sources or providers, <coughs> OSM, XYZ type um, providers, Stamen, TileJSON, Big Maps, WMTS, and WMS. And WMS, we support both uh, tile and single tile. Uh, we have a number of controls, attribution, full screen, mouse position, scale line, zoom, zoom slider. I will show you some of those um, in the demos. Uh, we have a vector layer um, with a rule-based uh, styling and a very powerful expression system. 
if you want to know more about that, you can go to Team Stuff, I guess. And we have many parsers already, GeoJSON, GPX, KML, filter encoding. So those are OGC uh, parsers, GML, WMS capabilities, and WMTS capabilities. <laughs> so just to say that we, and we have more, we have a, a, an animation framework uh, that we use internally and that you can, that we expose also, so people, users can, can do uh, all sorts of animations based on that framework. And we also support geolocation and device orientation. And actually there is more than that. Uh, just to say that the library is already, has quite a lot of features already supported. Uh, just a few, just two demos, few examples uh, to show what an OL3 map look like. So this is a Bing map um, map, and you can see the controls I was talking about. So these are very common stuff, plus and minus. So you can see that everything is animated. When you zoom, zoom in, zoom out, it's all animated. You can, m even when you pan, there is this kinetic uh, momentum effect while panning. Uh, we have this uh, scale line here control, excuse me, and, and other control as well. And some, something that we support is, whoops, yeah, rotation. So we support rotation, uh, which can be very useful on mobile devices. And we have this, you can, <coughs> when, when I move, we have this uh, binding stuff. When I rotate the map, I can see the, the inputs, input range uh, up there that moves as well. And we have this full screen uh, control that allows um, switching the browser to a full screen mode. Okay, so I, I mentioned uh, animation um, in the previous slide, previously. Uh, this, this, um, this example here um, demonstrates uh, what you can do with the animation framework. So you can do very, very, <laughs> so this is just an example. You, w you won't use that in a real application, I think, but <laughs> this, this kind of demonstrates the capabilities of the library. Elastic to Moscow, bouncing to Istanbul, and let's sp spiral to Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I will let <laughs> Cedric talk about um, the application they're building. Okay. Okay, hello, my name is Cedric Muller. I'm working for the uh, Swiss Topo. It's a national mapping agency in Switzerland. Thanks, Eric, to let me introduce GeoAdmin. My main goal today is simply to say that OpenLayers 3 is already very uh, good, is working. We can use it in productive application, and that's what we are going to do with MapGeoAdmin. MapGeoAdmin is based on OpenLayers 3, AngularJS, and Bootstrap, so we try to use really uh, last library, modern libraries. We created several components on the top of open layer, so kind, kind of widgets, and we name it uh, components. In the Angular jargon, they are, um, they are directive mainly. Mobile and, des uh, mobile and desktop application are is only one application. Previously, we had two applications. Now, with OpenAir 3, we are able to create also a very nice application on mobile. So we, we made only one application. It's really lighter. Previously, we had 600K, and now it's 250, and we can probably reduce that. And it will be in production on the 17th of October, and the code is available of Git on GitHub if, if you need it. So. One aspect is the responsiveness of the application. Here you have the application on a phone, application on a tablet, and an application on a desktop. 
So it's exactly the same code base, it's exactly the same application. With Bootstrap, we are really able to, to make the application depending on the width and the height of the screen, and also the touch uh, component. I will maybe make two simple demos. First, the responsiveness, you can see typically on the left here this uh, tool, that's a typical open layer 3 control. And now, when it's too small, when the width is smaller, then we have only two buttons, and we don't have the zoom slider control. You can see something equivalent also here in the search tool. We move it, and we also move it the accordion, depending on the, on the size of the screen. OK, an, uh, a nice function is the all-in-one search. Now you can search here for, uh, for layers and for location. In this case, I put water and with a nice preview function, which works very, very well with open layers. And a third, this preview is also active in the catalog. You can uh, select feature, select layers, and simply see a preview if you don't really need, if you, in order to check what is uh, what is the layer. <coughs> uh, in summary, really, I think you can already use Open Layer Three, so feel free to to make that. Okay. Uh, to conclude, I will give a quick status, status update on, on the project. Um, so we are about, if not already done, I don't know, we are about to release uh, 3.0 beta 1. So we had um, a series of alpha releases this summer, and this is going to be our first beta. Uh, the things we are currently working on, um, we're, we work on a new website. Uh, a new build system. Uh, we want. It's very important to be able to do custom. <coughs> Open layers three is going to be is already a large library, so it's important to be able to do custom builds uh, tailored for your applications. So that's what we're working on. Uh, WebGL vector is um, is a key thing. Something we're currently working on. We're making progress, but we're not yet there. Uh, vector editing, um, uh, something we've been working on. Uh, I think Tim also will uh, um, show you uh, the current status of that. That's the end of the talk. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, uh, thanks, Eric and Cedric. Uh, do we have any questions? N not directly right now. There is no support. You can change, for example, we support WMS, and you can change uh, WMS parameters on the fly, so you can easily add a time parameter. But it's not built in the library, I would say. But th this is something we've discussed already. Google is not supported right now. Okay. Uh, it was difficult to, it's been difficult to maintain in OA3 mm -hmm. um, because of the way we inter interact with the Google Maps API. Yeah. So it's not clear yet that we'll support Google Maps in OA3, okay. to be honest. Any other? <laughs> no, there is no compatibility. It's a, co it's a complete new, it's a, it's a rewrite and it's a new API. So maybe the compatibility is more on the features we support. We try to support what OL2 supports, which means if you, our objective is that if you have an OL2 application, you'd be, you will be able to update to OL3. Does that also mean that you, that you are trying to maintain OL2 still? And 
Yeah, we will maintain uh, OL2. And how long? I don't know exactly. It depends um, on our progress with uh, OL3, I would say. But I think uh, OL2 is here to stay for some time. Yeah, That's my opinion. If you say it depends on the progress with OL3, it sort of sounds like once OL3 is finished, we'll drop support or we'll drop uh, maintaining. No, I shouldn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's looking really beautiful for so <coughs> Are you doing tilt as well as rotation? Oh no, but this is in, in the plan obviously with 3D stuff and mm -hmm. yeah, we'll do that for sure. Is that going to be in the 3 release or 3.1 or later? No, the 3 release will be 2D only without tilt I think, but we'll add this later. Sorry, didn't... Minimum, minimum browser, browser requirement. Oh, excuse me. Uh, so we support, so w as I said, we, we use Canvas uh, extensively. Uh, that's our main, that's one of our main rendering engines. And so this is IE9. So we support Chrome, Firefox, obviously, and IE9 plus. And IE11 is supposed to support WebGL. So this is a very good thing for us. Okay. <laughs> Are there any plans to support SVG symbols, for example, point symbols? Because it's much easier to do than this canvas of UP. I don't think this is something we've discussed yet, but it would make sense to me, at least. <laughs> any other questions? No? Okay, now I'd like to thank Eric Cedric. <laughs>